I would now go on with the program of today and um, introduce our second speaker, which is Miriam Gruber. She's a researcher at the Center for Advanced Studies, Oyakpojano, and she holds a degree in political science and sustainable development from the University of Bern, Switzerland. And she's actually also a PhD stud student in political science at the University of Leipzig, Germany. Her main research interests include political discourses, climate change, populism, and party politics. And together with Kofla Ingrid, Elisa Innerhofer, Anja Macher, and Harald Bechlaner, she has recently published a book, The Future of High-Skilled Work, which she will present us today. So please, Miriam, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Linda. Um, now you should see my presentation. Um, as, as Linda said, I will give uh, a short overview about our book, The Future of High-Skilled Workers. Uh, generally speaking, we discussed in the book global and local drivers behind developments that change the nature of work. So we asked uh, what ongoing developments are influencing the future of work for highly skilled workers, what are the social, economic and political implications of these developments, who are the talents of tomorrow, which regions or cities are the most attractive and what does that mean on a global and also at a more regional level for Europe. So in order to answer these questions, we tried uh, to take an interdisciplinary approach, combining insights from, from different disciplines. And behind this book is a research project called The Best Place for Talents. Within the project, we tried to understand with local partners how South Tyrol could improve its position in the global competition for highly qualified workers, or as we call them, talents. Um, we found a lot of different definitions of who these talents are, but in general, these people seem to be central actors of future economies and the future of work. And their innovation and creativity are considered the key drivers for economic development and also growth. So in the project, it became very quick clear that the examination of such, such regional issues requires the con consideration of the global processes. In fact, um, companies, regions and nations are in a global competition for these talents. So we broadened the perspective in order to understand and explain regional phenomena from a global perspective in order to identify also development opportunities for the region of South Tyrol. And to do that, we used various methods such as the Delphi study, expert interviews, and also quantitative approaches like we develop a new index. Um, so this book is one result of this research project where we are also able to in integrate all of our empirical data. So, and in the first part of the book, we focused on various trends. So first, in the first chapter, we introduced uh, two main megatrends shaping the future of work, namely technology and demographic change. So this chapter offers a macro view of those trends embracing the future of work and talents. We show how new technologies and in particular digitization will introduce new tasks and new ways of thinking to the world of work. On the other side, we have the demographic change where the aging and shrinking of industrialized societies and also migration and feminization are considered important elements. The next chapter offers an insight in the topic of the skills. So we asked how are growing skill shortages generating political and socioeconomic tensions. So here we rely on, on vast research that shows that skill shortage is not the only problem. There's also a problem of a skills mismatch with implications at, at, at many levels. 
Moreover, we analyzed also the issue at the level of the organization. We asked what are the challenges that high-skilled workers or talents face in terms of the organization of, of work and life. And what role does a work-life balance play? In short, important is not only how well jobs are paid, but also the flexibility and democracy of an organization. So, for instance, if a certain job or a company is not attractive on that level, many talents can opt for more attractive alternatives elsewhere. And exactly this flexibility of an international mobile highly skilled workforce challenges companies to continuously rethink and adapt their strategies if they want to attract and retain talents. So the debate on talents is also connected to question of power and wealth in nations and regions. Um, before the pandemic, it was Quite, I saw that it was a quite generalized opinion that uh, location and production factors are crucial for talents. So the attractiveness of cities, regions, or countries is an important driver, but is also creating in inequalities at a regional, individual, and a global level. So economically strong countries and urban areas usually have location advantages, and. We briefly discussed in this chapter the role of place and introduced various concepts such as the death of geography, global village, or McDonaldization. Now we come to the second part of the book, which focuses on Europe and its regions. So as mentioned before, we created an index to analyze and compare 282 regions of the European Union, the United Kingdom, Iceland, Norway, and Switzerland. And this index is based on the Global Cities Talent Competitiveness Index and is divided also by the same five pillars. Enable, attract, grow, retain, and be global. And here I show you some results of the index. As you can see in this figure, the top regions are London, Ile-de-France, Oslo, Berkshire, Stockholm, and so on. So many regions where we also find the big cities. And lastly, as the aim, or one aim of our index is to measure regions' degree of talent competitiveness and internationalization within European countries, we also wanted to better understand the role of South Tyrol within Europe. Or in other words, we asked, can rural regions compete for talents? And in order to answer this question, especially for our case, South Tyrol, we outlined the strengths and the weaknesses. And here the former include aspects like internet access, high quality of life and GDP per capita and high security, while weaknesses are low investment in research and development, no headquarter of a global company, low tertiary enrollment rate, no top university, low proportion of people with tertiary education, and finally limited, limited access to passenger flights. But even though rural areas such as South Tyrol show some limits, especially in comparison to other regions, like we see here, Upper Bavaria, uh, where we find a city like Munich, rural areas can have interesting strengths. And especially now, in the current pandemic, um, it could bring some changes re regarding this rural and urban divide, but we will see that in the future. And in conclusion, in order to successfully manage the future of work, it is important to connect the global and the local issues. So this approach shows also how certain developments at the global level will affect the local and regional level or how specific regions can develop, can develop based on global conditions. And secondly, the relationship between the people and technology is a major issue. One fundamental question is always which technologies can fulfill which purposes. 
or to put it another way, which goal can be associated with technological development as a whole? Is it about creating innovation and improving economic efficiency, about sustainability, or is it about quality and price? So a third is work is, in a, in, is an important part of human dignity and self-perception. And it's not only about earning money, money no, and especially also not for talents. And it's always related to feeling useful and valuable. And lastly, diversity and explicitly considering and supporting women in the work world will be essential in the future uh, when it comes to creating regions that are also attractive for global labor markets. Thank you very much.